Hi everybody, welcome to our inaugural From the Workbench. I'm Fern Yoon and I lead an automotive systems team at Texas Instruments and today I'm so excited to have three fabulous women join me here today. Not only are they fabulous, they're also women in STEM. I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Jill Pastana and I'm a battery scientist and engineer. I work as the lead battery consultant at Accenture for North America and I also have a YouTube channel where I share all about my knowledge on batteries. Hi everyone, my name is Katia Chacerreta and I'm an electrical engineer. I started my career at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. I've worked on amazing missions like the Perseverance rover, Europa Clipper, and I was also selected out of 7,000 applicants from all over the world for a unique mission to space where I was able to become the first Mexican-born woman in space. Hi everybody, my name is Veronica Wright. I run a social enterprise called Electrified Veronica, short EV. So I'm a consultant in the EV and battery space and I also create lots of social media content. Um, how did you get into this and what made you kind of, uh, you know, get into the STEM fields? I I'm a musician and okay. was into science and math in high school. Very and so cool. I wanted to find a field that I could combine <coughs> music and science. And I figured there was something called acoustics, the physics of music, and that led me into physics. And from there I tried so many different things, astrophysics, and I got really interested in material science and electrochemistry, which led me to understanding that there's big problems in energy, how are we going to store renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So I got really interested in batteries, and that's how I led, that's what led me to batteries. I think for me, ever since I was a child, I just had this deep fascination with anything science, anything technology, especially anything electricity. Mm -hmm. The thing about that is that you don't really realize it at the time. Mm -hmm. So if I'm seven years old, I'm not necessarily going to say, oh yeah, what I really love is science and technology. <laughs> you don't have the words for it. But as I started to grow up, I started to realize that that's what I was really just drawn to. And as I started taking all these different science classes in school, I felt that they would come very naturally to me until I took my first physics class. <laughs> and the thing about that, and this is a very common story, but my path to it is the different outcome that I don't normally hear, which is I failed my first test horribly. And I said, this is what I've been looking for. This is the thing for me. Because I finally found this field that I was so fascinated by. It wasn't easy and I wanted to get better. I wanted to learn more. And I just became so, so obsessed in a positive way mm -hmm. with learning more, doing better, finding those answers. And the hardest thing, at least for me, physics related was electricity and magnetism. So who became an electrical either. engineer? <laughs> <laughs> In the beginning, I always wanted to be a kindergarten teacher. Growing up, you know, I was like seeing lots of other women doing that, my mm -hmm. own experience. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, I like playing with kids, let's do that. And never ever would I have thought that I would end up like with what I do now. So when you're young, you don't think about these yeah. things. But for me, it was really actually my physics teacher in high school that really inspired me to go into that field. I loved mathematics at that point. And then I also wanted to do something challenging, something that not everybody is doing. And so I decided to go into physics. I also enjoyed uh, math. And for me, it was to your point, Kat, you know, I didn't have the words for it, but I loved learning about how things worked. So much so that my parents actually got me a book that says how things work uh, for, for Christmas one year, I think. And it was, I loved reading it. And as I got older, um, I love just taking things apart and figuring out how things work. Uh, this may date me, but um, we had a VCR um, at the house. <laughs> it's okay. And I it's, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it stopped working. And so I asked my dad, I was like, hey, can I take it apart? I just want to see how it works. And so he was like, yeah, go for it. Um, so I took it apart. It was really fascinating just seeing all of the pieces, you know, that made up a VCR. Um, I couldn't put it back together. I, I didn't <laughs> fix it. But that really got me thinking, oh, okay, well, this is really exciting. This is really interesting. I wonder what else I can learn. I would say my journey towards electrical engineering is also a little unconventional. And something I wish people would have shared more is I did it through a process of, el of elimination, actually. I figured out what I actually didn't like and go, all right, tried that, 
didn't like it, <laughs> tried this other thing, didn't like it, and then I did find something that I did enjoy, and you know, to your point, Veronica, I didn't actually know the role I have today existed until, you know, you start working and you start exploring and learning about different things, and um, so that's been really fun. So it's very exciting to hear that all of you had very similar experiences to get to where you are. You know, Veronica, one of the questions that I get a lot is, what's it like to be a female in STEM? Uh, do you get that question a lot? And if so, you know, what, what do you say? What do you tell people? I get that question all the time. You know, as a physicist, mm -hmm. everybody is always like, oh my God, there's not many women in physicists, yeah. physics. And how, how does it feel like? You know, to me, it feels like just completely normal, honestly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if I think back, um, at university then working in the corporate world and even now I'm mostly surrounded by men I don't think it's a bad thing but there's one thing I want to share where I think diversity is just so important mm -hmm. I think you want to have people around you that you can identify with yeah. um, and this for a woman can be another woman right as a role model and I had this one moment where I went to a conference and all of a sudden there was a woman on stage which mm -hmm. is so rare in the automotive world mm -hmm. and I looked at her and she talked about batteries about EVs and she was so enthusiastic and when I saw her there I was like I want to do that yeah. I want to be on there yeah I think you know what I hear a lot is um, people want to be who they see and they want to see themselves um, in, in the future and so I think it's really important that we do have women in STEM you know sharing their experiences because I think it gives uh, the next generation the the idea of oh I can do that too exactly. very similar to your experience I definitely felt like I didn't belong and I had a lot of people telling me I didn't belong which did mm -hmm. not help mm -hmm. I tried so hard to blend in wearing the collared shirts and the khaki pants mm -hmm. and I felt so uncomfortable you'll see like, today I'm here in a dress mm -hmm. because and rocking this it. is what I love to wear and it's just the whole attitude of people towards women in STEM and the questioning I found my male colleagues weren't questioned. Mm -hmm. So when I would ask a man, you know, why are you in engineering? What interests you about it? They would be like, kind of taken aback that I was even asking them that yeah. when I was like, oh, I thought this was just a question that, that everyone get. asked <laughs> each other. Yeah. It's like, I felt like at every moment when somebody would put me down, it, it did cause me to reflect on like, do I really want to do this? Like, do I really want to yeah. put me, put myself through this harassment, this kind of daily battle mm -hmm. to prove myself, you know? becoming who I was, not not being sure if this was the right even path for me, but having those points of reflection based on that helped me really look within and understand, no, I really want to do this. And I can do and this. And I can do this. Yeah. Just based on those negative experiences, but at least in my case, and uh, Fern, you can probably relate to this too, in my case, I'm having to deal with a lot of these negative stereotypes because I'm a woman, but I'm also having to deal with a lot of these negative stereotypes because of my cultural background. And so sometimes these um, negative comments or, or negative situations come from me being Mexican. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's me being a woman, and sometimes it's both of them together at the same time. And the truth is that you become very strong. There is not a single thing that you can say to me anymore yeah. that will hurt me. <laughs> And the sad truth about that is, it's not that I was born strong, it's not that I've always been strong, it's that I had to become very, very strong because of all of the different situations that I've had to be exposed to mm -hmm. over the years. Now, this definitely started for me even when I made my choice of becoming an engineer. Mm -hmm. I would tell the people around me and, and the biggest thing that I would hear was, what? Yeah. Why? Like that? doesn't make sense for yeah. you. Why doesn't this make mm -hmm. sense for me? Mm -hmm. I'm constantly tearing things up. I'm constantly trying to figure out how they work. I'm constantly asking my science teachers for more problems and more work so that I can learn more. How does this not yeah. make sense? I mean, all the signs are there and have been there. For me, one of the biggest uh, signs of success when communicating a lot of these topics is when a young girl or even an older woman says to me, that is so interesting yeah. and yeah. something that has been so fun for me is I've had the opportunity to walk a few red carpets and be a part of a lot of these different fashion photo shoots and when I meet a famous celebrity 
like someone we definitely recognize on our screens and they ask me so what do you do and I say I'm an engineer and I do this and I worked on the rover and I worked on the spacecraft and I went to space and to hear these women say to me oh <laughs> I love quantum physics <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> I yes. love that uh -huh. and it's definitely not people that you might expect mm -hmm. but honestly it is so many of them and the question that I always ask them is why didn't you pursue that yeah and the answer is, I didn't know I could. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you would like to share about um, females who are thinking about, or maybe you know, hit that breaking point of, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I want to continue to push through. Um, what, what, what would you say to them? I think you just want to keep trying different things. I think this mm -hmm. is the most important thing because you never know what you are good at what you like before you try it and no one else can decide that for you yeah. and all of us would have never thought that we would do what we do today yeah. and we just try different things and I mean one of my stories is I'm actually a theory theoretical solid-state physicist <laughs> so I am like writing equations and doing simulations and things like this and I never saw myself as very hands-on but then Three years ago, we decided to convert a Jeep Wrangler to electric. Well, that's some hands-on work, right? <laughs> and I was the one <laughs> wrenching and everything mm -hmm. and taking this whole thing apart and really coming up with the design and doing the real work. And I would have never thought that I liked that so much. Mm -hmm. When I was building this battery box for my electric Jeep, I got so fulfilled, like even much more than doing my PhD in physics you know yeah. it's just it was this this new experience for me so you just never know you, you got to keep trying different things and you will find something mm -hmm. that you are passionate about mm -hmm. I was seven years old when I said that I would one day go to space and that seven-year-old was so determined because she didn't say I want to go to space she said I will one day go to space <laughs> and my mom was always right there next to me my biggest cheerleader uh, cheering me on and saying yes you will yes you will it's hard work you know that it's dedication you know that but you can do it you can do it and one of the biggest things that my mom always taught me was you're allowed to evolve you're allowed to change you're allowed to change your mind you're allowed to choose one thing and then later on decide that that wasn't the thing you want to do anymore and the biggest lesson that my mom taught me was you're allowed to combine as many of your talents and hobbies as you want into one career yeah and it might not I look like it at yeah. first but you can do that. And she always said to me, if there's something you want to do and you want it together and it does not exist anywhere in the world, then make it up. You have this bigger mission to serve and to serve that, to carry that out, it's about learning what makes you resilient mm -hmm. because you're going to come up with obstacles yeah. in your journey. How are you going to find a way to keep up your motivation <laughs> mm -hmm. and that your strength and, and not get sidetracked into something that you maybe don't want to do like stay stay on the path that your curiosity your interest what you love to do who you are and i feel like at this stage i've kind of mastered that tight rope to stay course and i'm just really proud that i've been able to overcome what i have to be where i am today with all you guys here <laughs> so. you know just really quickly uh, that reminded me of something that i wanted to share with you which is um, somebody told me one time, be water. And I said, be water, what does that mean? And he said, you keep hitting a wall and you're solid and you're hitting it and you're hitting it and you're hitting it and you know that you're not gonna have a different outcome. Be water, go around it. Yeah. No, thank you all for sharing these wonderful experiences with us. Um, and this is it. Uh, thank you for joining us on our inaugural From the Workbench and um, join us for more in the future.